get up get ready put your makeup on brush your teeth maybe don't put any makeup on because you're absolutely stunning just the way you are because we have another at-home edition of world of fortnite for you i'm your host sarah Puggy facelin and we have a great show for you today the rotation has the most customizable skins We'll reveal the lore secrets you may have missed in Season 6 in Point of Interest. And of course, we have everything the community is passing around in Low Ground. Now last time, we talked about the first issue of the Batman Fortnite comic book. But this week, I learned something else you may want to know. The collected Batman Fortnite Zero Point hardcover will include a code for seven in-game items. The seven items will all be DC Comics themed. Sounds pretty cool, right? I, I'm not a huge fan of comics or DC myself, but this sounds like a deal that is too good to pass up even for me. But up next, we're taking a look at five of the most customizable Fortnite skins. <laughs> Fortnite has some pretty creative skins and what always makes players happy is seeing edit styles on the skins they buy. Being able to customize your own skin gives you a chance to use the same skin for a long time without getting bored simply by switching between styles. A lot of skins such as the old Ragnarok and Drift skins never got these edit styles and none of those skins are being used today because they got redundant after a while. On the other hand, skins like Omega or the Soccer skins, also released around the same time, are still being used because of their customization option. Today, we'll be taking you through five of the most customizable skins Fortnite has released to date. Our number five spot is shared by Blackheart and Hybrid from Chapter 1 Season 8. These skins came in the same battle pass and are similarly customizable, where the first and last stage look entirely different. On top of that, the first stage doesn't look incomplete like some of the older battle pass skins such as Omega and Carbide, where the skin would complete itself as you gained levels to obtain the final stage. Blackheart is a pirate that turns into a ghost pirate, and Hybrid is a ninja that turns into a dragon-human hybrid. Both skins give the option to change colors for each progression stage and have first and last stages that look different enough to be two separate skins. A bunch of dragons running around the giant volcano surely brings back season 8 memories, doesn't it? The number 4 spot is shared by Rox and Vendetta from the next season. Following the futuristic theme of season 9, these two also have unique first and final stages, each with their own set of selectable styles. Both skins pack on armor with each stage, going from a basic human skin to a robotic super suit. You can change the color of the lights on the suits, the metal, and even the outfits of the original human characters. The best part about these skins is that the light on their suits isn't super bright like the Dark Voyager or Omega. You can still wear them when it's night in game without being easily noticeable. At number 3, we have Maya from Chapter 2 Season 2. Maya offered an insane level of personalization and was easily the most customizable battle pass skin ever. She also came with her own glider that is made up of several customizable parts. Maya had edit styles for her hair, tattoos, sleeves, boots, shirt, colors, vests, helmet, pants, you name it, as well as her face paint. The skin was all everyone was talking about during that season, and each of these modifications was locked behind its own mini quest. The reason why Maya isn't higher on the list is because A, her customization was locked to that season, and B, even with all of the customizations, each unique outfit didn't feel unique enough. You could modify her as much as you wanted, but she wouldn't lose that military secret agent-ish look. Moreover, there are so many skins that could be mistaken for a Maya skin from a distance. Number two on our list is the soccer skins. Infamous for being sweaty skins that only skilled players use, these skins actually let you pick from a number of colors. Once you've picked from a variety of male and female characters, you can then pick your soccer team that will allow you to dress them up with the respective jersey. The game doesn't let you customize each and every color because the outfits are predetermined, but there are 32 different combinations for you to pick from. Unlike Maya, these don't follow similar color patterns and offer a good range of options. That reminds me, it's been a long time since a yellow soccer skin donkey laughed at me after killing me point blank with a pump shotgun. 
At number one, we have this superhero skins from season four. Epic Games really went all out with these skins. Starting off, we have a bunch of different male and female skins, each with their own unique person. Then we have different styles for each skin color, hair color, mask variants, super suit variants, different materials and textures, and colors for each part of the suit, just to name a few. There's also an in-built emote that lets you flash your chosen icon like the bat signal and pickaxes with their own unique glow. If you see someone using a variant of the skin in game, it's very likely you'll never see someone using that exact same combination again. It's that good. The skins are also pretty cheap, priced at 1800 V-Bucks each despite being legendary skins. I'm definitely curious to see if Epic can make something even more customizable within the 2000 V-Buck price range in the future. And welcome to another installment of Playing with Pooks. This week, what I thought I would take a look at is the Hunter's Cloak. Now, what is the Hunter's Cloak? What does it do? How do we use it? The Hunter's Cloak uh, needs two pieces of bone and one piece of meat in order to be able to craft it. Uh, and it has a couple of different uses. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do is land in these brown wooded areas because I do have to harvest uh, the bone and meat in order to be able to craft the cloak. Seems pretty good. Concept of it, theory of it, seems pretty great. Uh, so, oh, here we go. Let's go. Hello. Cluck. Dry structures. Fly 10 meters with a chicken. Higher, Cluck. Let's, you know what, guys? Are you just testing? Oh. There was an animal here. Under cloak, we can already craft one. Holy craft. I was not expecting that. All right, all right, cool. Okay, hunter's cloak. Now we just consume it, put it on. Shazam! Look at that bad boy. My track record isn't great when it comes to stuff like this. Hello, friends? Nope, nope, why, no! What a foul thing to do! Why would you do that? I was trying to tame them. Oh my gosh, guys. Are you serious? Good. Cluck's dead. Yeah, you get him. Hello? Oh my goodness! Alright, you know what? Cluck's out. Little raptor friendo is in. Oh my gosh, we have a pet. Hi. Okay, look at us go. We're finding some good loot right now, guys. This game is basically free. If I lose, I will be uh, very surprised. Now that I've just jinxed myself adequately. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Focus is off. Some things happening. No! All right. We're gonna try that again. Now that we know how to do it, I feel like this is gonna take no time. Okay. Fuck you. Perfect. Oh, it's a T Rex. T Rex? The Lost Raptor? Never mind. That's a player. Goodbye. Hello, buddy. Hi. Oh, come back. Jerry. Oh! No! Pumba! Oh my gosh, guys! My gosh. Oh no, not great. 
We have to run. No! It, that jellyfish was supposed to be for me. Um, I'm being attacked. Well, guys, I obviously need a little bit more practice with the tactical shotgun. However, I think we're going to call it there. You guys saw how both times my tamed animals just completely left me in the heat of battle. I think they just don't like the names that I'm naming them. So I'm going to have to consult some kind of baby naming book or something and uh, do better next time. But that right there is the Hunter's Cloak. I hope you enjoyed this edition of playing with pooks and I will see you in the next one. Bye! He's back, he's back. Anybody, anybody, go. Oh my god. starving to see some great
place, hot chops is like a wonderful, warm, delicious meal. But for me, low ground is kind of like dessert. First up, Starlight Hay underscore found out that frogs can fly. Sort of. thought for a second that the little guy was gonna make it I was rooting for him and also I'm not sure if you guys caught that or not but did he poop in mid-air <laughs> next Kuvo finally makes it over the hump I'm not sure if you've seen the episode where we featured him trying to do it in our victory with cheese when he failed, but he's made it to the big leagues of low ground now, so congrats. Moving on, Backscatter333 wants to know how Zadie pulled the pin on his grenade. Among us in real life. Sus, sus. Among us in real life. Sus. I have a theory. Magnets? Uh, let's put a pin in it. We'll come back to that one. Next up, Nitro Dame Gaming thinks this may be a little bit ironic. How are you going to do Neymar like that? Uh, but that dive would probably get you a yellow card, let's be real. Finally, medium underscore yeti finds the expressway from Misty Meadows to the Spire. I don't know if any of you noticed that, but I think at the end there I saw a little propeller just morph out of the back of the plane. I actually have to go try that though, it looks like a ton of fun. But before I can, Point of Interest has all of the lore secrets you missed in Season 6. Chapter 2 Season 6 has given us this chapter's biggest lore update yet. However, Fortnite's storyline is somewhat disorganized and all of it isn't narrated through live events and pre-season cutscenes. Today, we'll be taking you through all of the lore secrets hidden across the map in Season 6. Many of Fortnite's lore secrets are hidden within NPC dialogues, some that even require you to wear a specific skin to access that particular dialogue. In Season 5, the NPC Bunker Jonesy had a lot to say about escaping the loop. This season, we have a bunch of new lore-related dialogues scattered across the map. Starting off, we finally have information on Jules' relation with Midas. Midas and Jules were two characters introduced in Chapter 2 Season 2 as members of the Agency. They had some similarities, but we weren't quite sure how they were related. The most commonly accepted theory was that they were siblings. In Season 6, Jules has arrived near Camp Cod as an NPC, and it turns out that she's Midas's daughter. There is a separate dialogue if you visit her as Midas that confirms the relation, but even if you use another skin, she will still make the same revelation. Another easter egg in this dialogue is that if you talk to her as Meowsles, who is Midas's arch nemesis, she will surprisingly acknowledge you without any animosity. Speaking of NPCs, we have a lot of them talking specifically about memory loss caused by the zero points energy. Back in season 4, Thor suffered from memory loss after entering the loop, which is the cycle of battle royale matches. Similarly, a lot of these characters are talking about patchy memories that are causing a lot of ambiguity on the island. This dialogue also reveals that Scuba Jonesy came into the loop to study the zero point. Does this mean that he is from the IO Agency's world? Note that a lot of characters never traveled through the zero point as far as we know. None of these characters are Agent Jones's hunters either. They were just brought here by the reality wave 
waves that cause the time rewind on the island. If you've been to Pleasant Park to defeat Jonesy for the challenges, you can also find a special dialogue after you've beat him in the duel. Jonesy reveals that there are people on the island who think that the spire can make them powerful. As these people are attracted to it, the spire also exploits their weaknesses to disarm them. Finally, Jonesy asks us to keep such people away from the spire. This is our first piece of information regarding the nature of the spire itself. It also seems like it has a mind of its own, from the way Jonesy talks about it. However, we still don't know who exactly is seeking power from the spire. Moving on, we have this chapter's first direct reference to the vault south of Caddy Corner. The vault is located right next to the mysterious giant doors that we know nothing about, like the Wailing Woods bunkers from chapter 1. A season 6 quest requires us to open the vault that we now know belongs to Tientina, a character from season 2. You can open the vault and investigate the anomaly by interacting with it. Unfortunately, we can't enter the vault quite yet, but it seems like the vault and the giant doors will play an important important part in this chapter's lore. As the Batman Zero Point comics are revealing new things about the lore, such as the storm possibly being controlled, we are soon getting an actual Batcave on the Fortnite Island. While the first issue of the comic series ended at Batman losing health to the storm, the appearance of the Batcave means that he survived and went on to transport his cave onto our island using rifts, just like how Tony Stark brought his labs onto the island in Season 4. Going back to the Zero Crisis event, did you recognize the giant lotus-like shape that the Zero Point created when the Foundation was working on it? Looking back a few seasons ago, you can find the exact same lotus being a back bling. The infinite bloom back bling that was part of the Season 3 Battle Pass is a direct reference to this lotus, which is strange because back then, Agent Jones wasn't even supposed to enter the loop. Finally, we have the reality portals from the event. Remember when you had to close the tears in reality using the Rift to Go? It turns out that each of those portals revealed a different scene from the Travis Scott event. The fire underwater, and even the space scenes were shown. This could also be epic reusing old assets, but it's pretty interesting that they decided to use the exact locations from that event. Hopefully it's Travis Scott making a return because that event was simply incredible. Just when you thought you knew everything that was going on in the Fortnite world, Point of Interest comes in and educates you just that little bit more. That about does it for us. Darwin and myself, but for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching, and now here is your Victor Royale with Cheese.